Hello. We are here with Archie. Looking like a beautiful day today. So, we're talking about uh, emotional health and physical health. <clears throat> what makes emotional health so difficult is our inability to see ourselves outside of the box. This is one of the reasons why we tend to go to therapists and psychologists, but when you do go to the psychologist, they tend to focus on the things that happened in the past. And they will ask you a question is, how did that make you feel? When you come to somebody like me who's a life coach, uh, they will ask you a question, what do you want to do about that? Yeah, we figured out you're overweight, you're not happy with your, whatever, you're not happy with your body, the shape of it, the size of it, the, uh, the pounds of it, whatever it is. So what do you want to do about it? You want to sit and bitch and complain about it and continue to do the things that you have been doing for the past I don't know how long that hasn't worked for you or you want to do something different and try something. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of one of my uh, one of my exes, um, she had struggled with weight management for the longest time. I'm talking about more than two decades. And uh, apparently it wore a tremendous amount of weight on her shoulders. And she lost weight before by counting carbohydrates. And I uh, was bobbled with the idea of it because if you get calories from carbohydrates, protein and fat, on the count of one of them doesn't really make any sense. Because she somehow figured it out that she lost some weight and it was effective, she didn't take my suggestions. It took her about a year of us being together and um, at one point she came to me and she says, okay, I'm ready to listen now. After that, in about four months, she lost about 32 pounds and she was perfectly happy. I hear a lot about people saying, oh, I don't want to count calories, the life is too short to count anything. Well, you, the, you, the reason why you got to the place you are in right now is because you didn't count anything. So for you to fix something, you have to go back and do the things you haven't done. That counting calories is one. It's very simple, uh, what do you call that? Calculation, calories in versus calories out. <laughs> Physical health is very, very simple. We will get to that. Now, on the on the other hand, emotional health. Now, the, the, these cows are going crazy. Emotional health is another thing. You have to figure out why you choose food or alcohol to make yourself better. What is that you are not okay with? What is that it is eating you inside? Most of the time, this is super difficult to do it by yourself. But what I suggest to people, anytime you, um, hello Ivan, anytime you catch yourself trying to comfort yourself with let's say food or alcohol, take a pause and say, what am I thinking? I know what I'm feeling. I feel that I need to eat something or I need to drink something to, feel better what am i thinking because in in cognitive behavior therapy this is a doctor i believe it was dr ellen who came up with this in the 80s brilliant doctor he says first we think that creates an emotion that we feel that emotion converts into an action we have to we have done uh, i'm gonna give you an example my my boss comes up to me and says gherkin that was fucking stupid. So automatically my brain goes to, wow, did I really do something stupid? That converts into an emotion of, huh, do we, do we need to fear this mistake or do we have to explain ourselves so people or my boss can understand the thought process? 
majority of the people automatically will think oh this person thinks I'm stupid which will make an automatic defensive mechanism which in action will be a counterattack like you are stupid in, in if you actually pay attention to what the person said he didn't tell you you are stupid he didn't say anything in that sort he said what you did was stupid in certain cases it is true you have to take a moment to reconsider what you've done and if it is what you did was stupid you need to say you know what I'm sorry I, I will do my best not to make that mistake again so we make mistakes we are humans it's okay to make mistakes what is not okay is to repeat the mistake so always evaluation always always in the back of your head what am I thinking that is causing this emotion that is pushing me to eat or pushing me to drink or pushing me to do drugs whatever it is so, no, Bess, you can't just believe that you are stupid. Nobody's stupid. We do stupid things. Definitely, we all do stupid things. This is why we have a saying, young and dumb. Older we get, the more mature we get. The brain functions better. Uh, we learn to look at life events from multiple point of views to understand things. So, hello, Debbie. Um, so no, nobody's stupid. Regardless how many people tell you you're stupid, just because somebody told you ocean is not wet, doesn't make the ocean dry, okay? First of all, if you have that many people around you that is trying to put you down, you need to change the people that you are around with. You need to be with the people who are trying to lift you up when you are down, not to put you down. Um, so, going back to my advice to people, yeah, we do stupid things, so we, we always reconsider what am I thinking, what is the corrective um, action that will follow this mistake. If there is a mistake, if there is no mistake, you sit there and explain them, hey, I was thinking about this and this and this and that make me do this action at the moment it sounded like a great idea but apparently it's not so i apologize you know uh hello Brittany. so the most important thing when it comes to emotional health is that you have to be enough to yourself Majority of the people when they walk into a room um, or let me go to the woman before they get out of the house they check their hair before they open up a door or they answer a video check they check their hair their makeup their outfit if they look presentable enough if they look good enough uh, men are a little bit more slobby that's why they call us snobs that are, we don't really yeah. care <laughs> makes it a good thing or a bad thing um, it doesn't matter but you have to be enough to yourself. Uh, the example I give to myself that I keep repeating, I'm not the youngest one, I'm not the best looking guy, I'm not the fittest one, I don't have the best six pack on the planet. As a matter of fact, I don't have any packs right now. Uh, I'm not gonna be the smartest one. So yes, there are gonna be people that are smarter than me, which I'm okay, which I actually, thrive on that because they will teach me some things that I don't know and there are going to be people that's not going to be as smart as me and that's okay I will try to teach things to them at no point in this thought process goes you know what I'm not good enough or would I be good enough should I be good enough or what, what would I do to be good enough so it, it, at all times trying to repeat remind yourself you know what I'm good enough for myself and if the people around me are okay with that they will stick by you regardless how many mistakes you make and the people who think their shit doesn't stink they will go away and they will find some other things to do once you close the door on them because if somebody is not next to you as a friend as a partner as a husband or as whatever if they're not next to you to lift you up and make you feel better, especially when you need it the most, those people don't need to be next to you at any time.
anybody can be with you when you're feeling good everything is great and you're happy but pay attention to the people who's with you when you're down when you feel like crap when you just close yourself in the bathroom and cry and they're the ones who's bugging the crap out of you so you'll pick up the phone maybe they will make you feel better those are the people uh, that you need to be with those are the people you need to surround yourself with we all we humans are like roads there's nothing called a flat road there's nothing called a road with no speed bumps or holes potholes um, valleys uphill downhill we will have a great day the next day we will have the shittiest day on the planet you know it, it is it, it's life it has its ups down it's just like nature for black to exist there has to be white for you to be happy at one point you have to get sad for you to understand the value of the happiness you're gonna get sick you're gonna feel like shit you're gonna throw up all day for you to realize how important your health is and if you're not healthy guess what everybody around you is not gonna be happy so those things happen in life so for you to feel great today you're gonna feel sad one of these days and hopefully you will have somebody next to you uh, trying to poke you every second so you will they will get some kind of a response from you so they will try to put a smile on you and you'll know these people and unfortunately those are the people who always get pushed to the side so if you want to have a great relationship with people good people pay attention to when you're done only well, we are good thank you um, we are talking about emotional health and well-being it is seriously impossible to be emotionally happy when you're physically not healthy I mean who smiles when they're about to throw up because they got food poisoning i used to get food poisoning a lot and i throw up a lot oh my god i was horrible nobody's smiling nobody's happy so your physical health definitely affects your emotional health vice versa so what we're gonna do is first of all we're gonna figure it out what gonna make us happy but when you set goals your goals have to be one realistic you are not the same person in high school that was 10 15 years ago that little kid is gone you are the adult so for you to look like high school person again is possibly not realistic second thing is you have to hello Eileen um, for you to put a goal it has to be achievable attainable you can't just say I'm gonna be on top of the um, skyscraper and fly and jump out that's not an attainable goal that doesn't make any sense so we the way I suggest weight program is first of all what makes you think that given weight would make you happy what is that magic number and to me I, I this is how I break it down the body is made out of three things protein fat and bones bones you can hardly change the density of it it'll get better but the, as far as the weight it won't um, it won't give so there's two things left how much muscle you got this is the protein and how much fat you have so if you get a guy that has absolutely almost no fat nothing but muscle and weighs about 250 pounds looks completely different than somebody who weighs 250 pounds and that's about 38 percent body fat so hello Amber so it, it, it the, the number has to be reflected into those two categories how much fat do I have how much muscle I need I'm trying to gain and then set the goal once you set the goal diet is number one how clean you eat clean meaning I still have a deep fryer I will still deep fry my catfish and eat my color greens this is the south in me my southern people taught me well with my grits in the morning I will still eat anything and everything but I don't sit down and eat a pound of bacon every morning like I used to um, Freeman how you doing so we 
try to teach what to eat, how to eat, when to eat is most important. There are a lot of people that try to get onto the diet, which I absolutely hate, because diet means collective of everything that you eat and drink. So when you say you're going on a diet, it doesn't really mean anything. Now, if you have a restricted calorie diet, that makes more sense. First, we have to calculate how much calories you are expending today. So you can create a deficit, so you will use some of the fat reserves that you accumulated over the years. And then we exercise, you don't necessarily have to exercise, but it will accelerate the weight loss, definitely. It will make you healthier. Cardiovascular problems in the United States are the worst problem that we have, other than the politicians. Uh, you don't have to kill yourself like the biggest loser. That is one of the biggest nonsense. You don't have to take pills. That's I'm probably going to get sued eventually for saying things like that because th there are pills out there. They go to the commercials and they say, yeah, you don't need to change anything in your life. Just take the pill. Well, I guess the reason why you gained all the weight because you didn't have this pill right after you were born for the rest of your life. That doesn't make any sense. You got to a place because you did something that was done overly and you need you do need to change that you don't need any kind of pills supplements any kind of what do you call that liquid diets none of the, to me that all of those are nonsense um, now you are going to limit the things that you eat you are going to get your butt off the couch and move a lot more and this way not only your energy level is going to go up but also you're going to start to lose weight and the lose weight part is no more than two pounds a week this is what we prescribe when we write the regimen because anything faster than that you are not changing the habit yes you are losing the weight you will lose the weight might be majority of it might be water weight but you will gain it back up which is completely counterproductive if anybody's watch Oprah over the years poor woman got the millions of dollars but nobody wants to tell her the truth her weight goes up and down and up and down in the magnitude of 60 70 pounds I wish I can have a, I can have the chance to sit down and talk to her look this is happening because you have too much money and people are just want your money rather than your well-being so we're gonna change what you've been doing. We're gonna change the behavior. We're gonna change the way you eat, the way you move. You're gonna lose the weight. It's gonna stay off. We gonna we have weight loss, weight maintenance, and weight management. We're gonna collectively get all of this together. We're gonna get you more healthy. When you look at the mirror in the morning, at night, whenever, when you're butt naked, you're gonna say, I totally rock. Yeah, I, I might have a mommy pouch, but you know what? The rest is great. And to me, mommy pouch is great too. That just gives character to the woman. So we have to change things. The, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we eat. The, a lot of people say, say, yeah, it's a lifestyle changes, but nobody understands what the hell that means. That means Within 15 minutes after you wake up, you will consume some kind of a carbohydrate, which is more than likely an orange juice or a fruit. Uh, the, one of the reasons, the reason why we say breakfast is the most important meal of the day is this. You eat dinner no later than six in the afternoon. And then you get up at six, maybe grab something by 7.30. By eight o'clock you had breakfast. That is. 14 hours of not eating so the brain says after you whatever you ate at 8 o'clock the brain says huh this dum uh, dum might not eat for another 14 hours so let's store some of that food that we just got just in case if he doesn't eat no well, that, that that didn't really serve a purpose we tell people to consume some kind of a carbohydrate which is like a four ounce of orange juice or a banana whatever it is 
simple carb. So the brain says, "Ha, huh, you know what, dude? The, the the sugar is coming, the nutrients are coming. We don't need to be stored in anything. This is why we eat every two hours, three major meals, and in between meals, three different fruits and some nuts. And it is really the 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 once you start learning how to eat, you will feel fuller." you will have more energy and quite frankly i found it a lot cheaper to eat this way you get a head of a cabbage for a dollar fifty it will make you lunch and dinner for three days straight versus you going to applebee's for lunch and dropping about 20 25 dollars getting all the fat all the all the grease and all the salt out of it and what happened you get back to work your insulin spiked you feel tired and sleepy productivity went down and you just feel like poop uh who is this Bess? if you can't eat you don't have to eat in the morning as long as you give the body something to continue Within 15 minutes, I, what I tell people is get up, brush your teeth, hopefully with some toothpaste, um, chug some orange juice. You know what? You're good for at least 40, 45 minutes. When you drink coffee, the coffee does have some kind of a fat in it. If you ever get your um, coffee filter and touch it, your fingers will get greasy. If you put creamer in your coffee, there's nothing but loaded with unnecessary bullshit fat. Um, you get in calories therefore you don't necessarily eat anything so we eat every two hours you get up chuck some fruit uh, about half an hour later or so you'll have your breakfast which should be about 300 calories or so three to four hundred hour and a half later you eat a half a banana that's a serving of a banana it's a half a half a banana um, yeah he's here um, hour and a half later, you throw a couple of nuts in your mouth while you're working. They put them in your pocket, whatever. Brittany, you can't forget to eat lunch. You forget to eat lunch, it's because it's a chore to you. Do you ever forget to get gas for your car? You'll do it once or twice after you're pushing that car or walking a mile and a half. You won't forget it again because it is a necessity if you look at food and the way you supposed to eat is a necessity it is the nutrients for your body to survive not pleasure you won't forget to eat lunch hey robin hello there best you can't just eat one meal a day when you do that you, i promise you you will gain weight and it's in the see this is this is so badly uh for women over 35 because they said at the age of 35 is the cutoff for us to process to kick in for American woman. Uh, one of the reasons is once you eat once a day, the body says restore everything that you get. Well, the energy gonna come out somehow. You don't just go to bed and sleep. So the energy comes from your muscles. Once your muscle start melting, the bones density says, you know what, we don't need to be uh, strong anymore so your bone starts melting the osteoporosis kick in and continues about next 20 years like that if any of you had a elderly person in your life that broke a bone when you when you have osteoporosis the healing process doubles the time which is extremely painful and your life goes to crap imagine breaking your hip you can't move, you can't get up, you can't go pee on your own, you can't even get off the toilet after you peed. Life becomes miserable when you're that old. So let's just take precautionary measures so we don't get there. Anyways, I think this has been too long. I, uh, I tried to keep it for 15 minutes, but this is my passion. So I, I do take off running and I can sit here and talk for hours. But uh, thank you for joining us, Brenda, Robin, Bass, Brittany. You guys have a wonderful day. And uh, me and Archie, 
We will see you next time.